Hey everybody, welcome back to The Way of Ramen. So my video production schedule is pretty much screwed because of the lockdown. My kid is home all day and so filming is hard and I can't really get to the store. But I saw this as an opportunity to try some new things out and get a little resourceful so to speak. So for this video, I wanted to see if I could make a bowl of ramen using no specialized Japanese ingredients and no specialized ramen making tools. A lot of people have told me they can't really find Japanese ingredients in the area, so if that's you, this video might help you make your own version of lockdown ramen with whatever ingredients you do have. So yeah. Let's get right into it. So the first thing we're gonna do for our lockdown ramen is make some noodles using some very normal ingredients. I'm baking a tray of baking soda here in the oven for one hour at 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I'm gonna transfer this to a glass container. This will be your powdered kansui for your ramen noodles. Next, I'm gonna add one egg white to a measuring cup and then fill that cup up with water until it weighs 139 grams. Then you're gonna add three grams of your baked baking soda and three grams of kosher salt and mix it all together. Then you're gonna take that mixture and slowly add it to 300 grams of flour. I'm using bread flour, but all purpose flour should work as well. I'm using chopsticks, but you can use a fork or a spoon, anything that will help you work the kansui into the flour. After the initial mix, use your hands to really work the liquid into the flour. This dough is a 46 percentage hydration dough, which should make it easy enough to work with without a pasta machine. Transfer the loose dough into a Ziploc bag and then let it rest as is for 30 minutes. After the 30 minute rest, put the Ziploc into another bag and then step on the dough to knead it all together. Dust your cutting board with some cornstarch and then roll out your kneaded dough as thin as you possibly can. The thinner the better. Mine didn't turn out as thin as I wanted it, so learn from my mistakes. Try to get it as thin as possible. And once you get it as thin as you possibly can, cut the sheet of dough to the length of the noodles you want, and then roll the dough, and then cut the dough into ribbons. Loosen your ribbons into noodles, and then hit it with some cornstarch and start smashing them together. This will make what's called a timomi style noodle, or hand massage noodle. This style of noodle is supposed to help bring up more soup and flavor than a standard straight noodle. When your noodles are sufficiently timomi put them in a Ziploc bag and then let them rest in the fridge overnight. Next we're going to make a quick tare. I put 2 tablespoons of soy sauce into a bowl. Then I added half a teaspoon of anchovy paste. My thinking here was anchovy paste could bring the fishy flavor that would come from a niboshi or katsubushi, and also add some glutamic acid for umami as well. When it comes to choosing ramen ingredients, you're usually either chasing flavor or umami. And this anchovy paste has both, so I think it's a pretty good substitute and it's pretty easy to find for most people. Next, I'm adding half a teaspoon of fish sauce, again for more umami, half a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, and a pinch of sugar. I'm gonna mix this all up, and that will be my tare, a quick raw anchovy tare. Next, we're gonna make some aroma oil for the ramen. If you can get some kind of animal fat like schmaltz, duck fat, or lard, use that. But if you can't, you can just use canola oil for this. I'm going to be adding some more of that anchovy paste to the oil, and also some sliced garlic and some green onions. This will kind of be like an anchovy garlic oil, which I thought could serve as a replacement for a niboshi oil. Just let that simmer at low heat until the garlic starts to change color. And then when the garlic changes color, just strain it out and you have your anchovy oil. In another lockdown ramen video, I'll make some soup from scratch, but this time I'm just gonna use the Chinese chicken stock powder. 
350 ml of water and one teaspoon of chicken stock powder. Give that a mix and your soup is done. Drop your noodles into boiling water and cook them for as long as it takes to cook them. Mine were super thick, so it took a good five minutes to cook. Yours may take more or less time, you just have to taste it as you go. While your noodles are cooking, add one tablespoon of tare into a heated bowl, along with one tablespoon of anchovy oil. If you want, you can add some black pepper here as well. And these measurements are just recommendations. When your noodles are about done, you can add your soup to the bowl. Then strain your noodles and add them to the soup. Top with whatever toppings you want. I cut some green onions from my backyard and added a slice of kamaboko. And that's a bowl of lockdown anchovy ramen made with relatively easy to find ingredients. Now this bowl had a mild fishy flavor and the anchovy was a pretty decent substitution for niboshi. I think if I do this one again, I'll add more tare to get the soy taste up a little. It was a little weak for me. And the rum oil, I'll probably try to use chicken fat because I really like that a lot better. But the anchovy oil was not bad. I just needed to add a little bit more to the bowl like the tare. The noodles were not so great to be honest, but I think it's because I didn't get them as thin as I needed to. If I had rolled them a little thinner and maybe cut them a little thinner, um, the noodles might have been pretty good. So I'll probably just use the rest of the noodles for something like a masi soba or something that calls for thick noodles and that will match a little better. All in all, definitely not the worst bowl of ramen ever made and pretty good considering I just used whatever I had around my house. If you like this video and want to learn more about making ramen, feel free to join my Discord server. There's a bunch of us in there talking about making ramen all the time and I personally feel like I learned a lot just by seeing what everybody else is doing when they're making ramen. Also, I like to see your bowl of lockdown ramen, so feel free to post pictures in the Ramen Picks channel on the server. You can also follow me on Instagram and connect with me there, at We Have Ramen. Like I said earlier, the lockdown really messed up my filming schedule, but I'll try to figure something out to make more videos for you guys. There's probably gonna be more lockdown ramen in the future. Thank you guys all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. I hope you all stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.